Hello, I'm meteorologist Jeff Matthews, and you're on the module Tornadoes. Oh, the kids love to ask me questions about tornadoes. Tornadoes are one of the smallest storms on the Earth. However, pound for pound, meaning because of their small size, they're limited in terms of how much damage they can cause, but pound for pound, if you were to equate them in size with anything else like a hurricane, they are the most destructive storm on the Earth. Fortunately, they're much smaller than hurricanes. In fact, you could fit thousands of tornadoes in a single hurricane. So that makes hurricanes far more devastating in terms of their widespread damage potential. But pound for pound, the tornado is the most devastating storm on Earth. There are multiple types of tornadoes. Did you know that? For instance, on the water they can form. They're made of the water, and so they're called a water spout. In this picture, if you look carefully, these are ships. So if they were to be hit by that water spout, they would easily be capsized and destroyed. Another form is called the dust devil. These forms over desert-like regions, like in the southwestern part of the United States. They're made basically up of the air and the debris from the ground that the air creates by creating the vortex or the funnel or the dust devil. And as you can see from this picture, they can form in a totally clear sky. So there must be other reasons for their formation, right? It can't be just because of a thunderstorm cloud, because there are no clouds in this picture. It's all about the air temperature and the air pressure. Because of the heat of the day and the rising air, you can get circulations to form vertically as well as horizontally. There's another form, the very rare form of the fire NATO. And they also tend to form where it's very hot, but they're very, very rare. Okay, let's talk about where they occur and why. Where they occur, it's possible to see one anywhere in the country. But the Rocky Mountains make it difficult for tornadoes to form because of their elevation. The same can be said for the Appalachian Mountains and the eastern part of the country. The middle part of the country is the most likely area. So... Why is that? Well, that's because that's where the coldest of the cold air can come down from Canada without being stopped and meet up with the warmest of the warm, humid air from the Gulf of Mexico, and they meet up right in the breadbasket, right in the middle of the country, and that's why that's referred to as Tornado Alley, because they are so much more common there than in other parts of the country or the world for that matter. And by the way, the United States sees the most tornadoes on average of any country in the world. How about closer to home here in New York? How common are they? Well, we average here in central New York about one tornado every two years. That doesn't seem like a lot, but of course any tornado can be devastating, so they're never welcome wherever they go. The middle of the country, the prime area for where the coldest of the cold and the warmest of the warm air meets, can see as many as 10 per year or more. So we only see them here once every two years on average. In the middle of the country, they see them every year and 10 times per year. So that makes it much more common there. Also, what season are they most likely to occur in? Well, they're not likely to occur in winter because the cold air from Canada tends to dominate much of our country. They're not as likely to come in summer or fall because the warm air from the south generally is allowed to move all the way up, unabated and unstopped, all the way through most of the country. So it's in springtime that the cold air is still able to come down from time to time, and the warm air is able to come up from time to time, so the transitional season of spring is the most likely time for a tornado to occur. Now, I'm going to briefly explain some elements that go into tornado formation. Suffice it to say, these are very complicated, and even we meteorologists don't understand everything about them, nor can we explain why do sometimes they form, even though there might be an element or two missing from them, and other times they fo don't form when all of the elements are present, and they should have formed. So there are still cases where we struggle with in determining why they form and when they do. But suffice it to say, Warm, humid air clashes with cold air in the middle of the country, in this case, and that causes the air to rise, 
cool, condense, and form thunderstorm clouds. Now here's the key to this. There are turbulent eddies inside the storm, wind circulations going on inside. When those wind circulations, in, depending on which direction they go, encounter the jet stream going through the cloud, it can cause those circulations to bend and therefore allow a vortex to form inside of it. And inside the circulation of the thunderstorm itself, there are winds going in advance of it up to the top and in the middle coming down. And so because of those circulations already present inside the thunderstorm, if the jet stream moves through it, it can force those wind currents to come down the back of the thunderstorm and create a vortex or a tornado. Okay, are you ready for your quiz? Here we go, question number one. Number one, where are tornadoes most common? I talked about that. Question number two, when are they most common? What season? And question number three, why do they form, where they form, and why do they form when they form? So why do they form where question one is, and why do they form when question two is? Okay, you've thought about it, here's your answers. Where do tornadoes show up most commonly? In the middle of the country, because that's where the warmest and the coldest air meet. When are they most common? What season? That season would be springtime. It's a transitional season when there's still cold enough air from Canada, but there's still warm air beginning to move up from the equator and from the south, and that's where they meet. Why do they form, and when do they form? Because the clash between the cold air and the warm air are greatest in the springtime in the middle of the country. And if those conditions are present elsewhere, like in central New York, they can form a tornado here as well. That's take a look at the tornado module. Now I have a brief demonstration. Hello and welcome to the tornado demonstration. It would be hard to do an experiment because they're so violent and destructive, but we can at least do a demonstration for you. In this demonstration, I'm going to explain that once we get the thunderstorm cloud, which of course forms because of the clashing of very warm and very cold air, that clash and then cause violent rising motion of the air that causes the storm to form in the for first place like a mushroom, then under certain conditions you can get a tornado to form on the back side of a thunderstorm cell. The main reason, at least one of the main reasons, why a tornado may form is because the jet stream wind, a very heavy wind at 20 and 30,000 feet, cuts through the thunderstorm cell and forces those currents to turn sideways or completely flip upside down. So that's basically what it comes down to. So having said that, let's check out our tornado in a tube where we've got the warm and cold air meeting and then we add the jet stream causing that spinning or circulating and there you can see inside the tube the tornado in a tube. Only this way it's much more safer than its real counterpart. I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration of tornadoes and I hope you've learned something as well.